first of all, let's separate out the difference between you know, what is Bitcoin and what is everything else. People need to understand that Bitcoin is not really a cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is a collectible. Satoshi, when he created it, it was almost a miracle. He was trying to create a digital currency. That was what his goal was, but he was the first guy to do it. But he was, he was so precise and so on what he was trying to do to make sure that it succeeded, that he basically outdid himself. And this is the reason why it's not smart to spend it. So he created something that's too valuable to spend. If I would have sold it, you know, sold my Bitcoin when I bought it, I'd be a complete idiot. I mean, it just keeps going higher and higher. You don't, you know, you don't sell an investment when it's running in Bitcoin. Like I said, it's a collectible. You think of it in terms like a, you know, like a, a, a baseball card or a painting. I mean, you buy these things and you, you hold them and it's even like a bar of gold. You put it in your safe and you, you, you save it. You don't spend it. That's where the word hodl came in. And so I don't, think in ter- Bitcoin in terms of a cryptocurrency. I think of it in terms of just an asset, just a collectible. And so you want to just buy it and hold it. You don't want to buy it and spend it. You don't, you just never spend Bitcoin. I was telling my people in the GSD forum when it was below a thousand dollars to buy Bitcoin. So I've been doing this for a while. I'm, wow. not, I'm not new to this game. You know, yeah. I wrote wrote an article about Bitcoin. It's on my website. How 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 Bitcoin works. It's 100 pages long. It's thorough. You want to know how? And and I and I talk about. So I got into Bitcoin after Bitcoin uh, ran to 1,000. I said, "What? It went to 1,000 dollars? What the heck?" And then it crashed down to 250. This was in 2015, I believe. And that's when I started following it. And I did know I had never did any research on Bitcoin prior to that. When I did my research, it blew my mind. The thing that blew my mind is what's, what's blowing everybody's mind now. Bitcoin hasn't changed. It's the same thing, right? But it's the way that it was designed. So what Satoshi did, nobody else, you know, nobody's been able to do what Satoshi did. Nobody's, nobody can, nobody's able to copy Bitcoin. That's why they call everything, S, everything else S coins, because nothing is the same. So the, what Satoshi did was... I don't know. People, I'm sure people don't know this story that are listening. So Satoshi wrote a white paper in 2009. He released this white paper. The white paper, you can read it. You can go download it. It basically explains the overall idea and architecture that he's going to use. It's just a kind of an overview, if if you will. Then he wrote the software. And the software is basically in two pieces. One is the nodes. And what the nodes do is the nodes basically validate all the transactions and keep a, keep a copy of the digital ledger. That's all it is. It's basically just a digital ledger. And the other software is the mining software. And the mining software is where you mine the Bitcoins and you, every 10 minutes the Bitcoins are created. So it's two different distinct pieces of software. So then after, so step one was he did the white paper. Step two was he put the two software programs in GitHub 2009 and told people, okay, I invented, I, I created this software, download it and start, and, you know, start using it. Um, 2009. And then 2010, it was turned on for the first time, like January, 2010. And then in 2010, he sent, Satoshi sent emails out to other people to answer their questions. We have all these emails from him. So we know it was the same guy that wrote the white paper because the way that he spells English words is in, you know, the English, um, you know, Great Britain type of English. We know that he basically isn't an American. He's basically in some British Commonwealth or he's in England or whatever. And we also know that he's brilliant because of the way that he writes. I mean, I'm a writer and the guy writes better than me. Um, so he's a brilliant dude. I mean, he's, he's, he was definitely a professor of some type. And then the end of, right around the end of 2010, after a Bitcoin was up and running and they had the first exchange up, he disappeared, gone, vanished, never to be heard from again. So what he did was he created uh, an organic, no, there was no owner. So he was the originator, right? He was the um, originator and he disappeared. So it was created organically and he created it so organically that you couldn't kill it can't be turned off because there's no organization. 
nobody else has this no other and there's no other crypto out there that if you didn't have somebody behind it keeping it alive it would die nobody's nobody else has ever tried to do it satoshi did just put the software up there and disappear nobody's ever because the reason why is because it wouldn't work right yeah so there is no um comparable to bitcoin it's it's a unique animal um it it's not going anywhere you can't turn it off i mean if the united states and europe to tomorrow said bitcoin's illegal to do transactions right bitcoin's illegal it's not going to happen but if they both did that that wouldn't kill bitcoin it would just all move to asia it would move to asia japan's basically already kind of um, you know accepted it with open arms if you if you go to tokyo there's a bitcoin sign in every corner wow um bitcoin's not going anywhere because it's a global thing the only thing that requires bitcoin to stay alive is the internet to be up and they said that a nuclear event can't take the take the, the, the internet down so bitcoin is safe it's secure i mean you can re read my article it's safer than a bank because you know nobody can you know, it's no third party. If you have a hardware wallet in your hand, no one's, t you know, and you have your keys, it's unbelievably safe. That's why I say when you first read about it, it kind of blows your mind what he actually did. And that's why I say Bitcoin is not a cryptocurrency. It's basically a collectible. Once you recognize that, the only thing that Bitcoin is really good for is the same thing a Picasso painting is good for as an investment. You put the Picasso on your wall and it stays there. You never leave it. And then when you, and you pass it down to the next generation, the only time you take that Picasso off the wall is if you literally have to sell it, right? Yeah. Millionaires, when they have all these paintings in their houses, those paintings stay on the walls. That's what Bitcoin is. It stays in the safe. The other cryptos, all your other cryptos, they are all based on a use case. Not, not, not uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin's not based on a use case. You know, Ethereum's use case is basically a smart contracts. And it's, it's right now the leader of that. Every other crypto, when you invest, you're investing in a business. It's like investing in Microsoft. That's not the same thing with Bitcoin. It's a completely different animal. I'm glad I could share that with your listeners. So. <laughs> no, thank you so much. But as far as the other coins go, I mean, you're the expert at finding gold mining companies that might be unseen and unfavored, uh, but like you're saying, the altcoins just don't have. I mean, is, is no, there value there? No, no the I, the altcoins are very exciting. I mean, okay, okay, so your website is all about big returns, right? Yep. Okay, so trading. What your listeners need to get into is trading crypto. Now we're not talking about trading Bitcoin. Buy your Bitcoin, don't touch it. Or if you want to trade a little bit of Bitcoin, fine, but eighty percent of it lock up. But the other other cryptocurrencies, yeah, they're not going anywhere and you can make a lot of money trading them. And there's a guy named Mitch Ray who I follow who's basically, you know, he, he has his own Patreon channel where he teaches people how to trade. But he has a show, every podcast, every single day. And he t you can learn how to trade just by watching his free podcast every every day. And, but um, trading trading um, crypto is so cool because it's, they, they're all they're all volatile, right? That's the best way, that's the best way to trade is you get these trade setups, and you can scalp basically you know chunks of money every day. You know, volatility is the is the best thing for for traders, right? You can trade both directions, up and down, based on volatility. And so, I mean, there's this one guy, he's tr just trading alone. He's made 75 Bitcoin just in trading alone. Can you imagine? Wow. Yeah. 75 Bitcoin. That's a lot of Bitcoin. And, and the reason why he's been able to do it is because of the volatility. And he's a good trader, of course. But that same thing, what he did with, the, with that Bitcoin, you can do with these other altcoins. You just, you'd have to learn how to trade. Me, I don't have a really a trading mentality. You have yeah. to have that mentality that, you, you know, you know, that's what you want to do. You got to, you know, you got to be driven to do it. You got to be excited to do it. You got to basically see oh, there's like money there to be had. I'm not going to let it go. You know, you got to be kind of passionate about it. I don't have that. I don't have a passion for trading, but um, these altcoins, there's going to be some tons of opportunity. Uh, for instance, the Ethereum world, if you will. So you have Ethereum and then you have all of these DeFi different tokens that are involved and all these, you know, 
Ethereum related coins, I think a lot of those are just going to be, you know, big movers, if you will, and a lot of opportunity for trading. I think that um, Ethereum is going to go to 5,000. So that's a big move. And I think that whole move is going to have a whole bunch of volatility in it where you can trade and get these trade setups. When, when, when Ethereum was at 200, I thought that was the best setup for a trade since uh, Bitcoin at 1,000. <laughs> wow. That's right. Yeah. You know, basically 5X. Same thing happened with Bitcoin. It went from 1,000 to 5,000, 5X. So yeah, you can see these, tr- these setups coming and they're just, they're really obvious and they generally happen. And that's where you can make big returns through trading. Um, and the crypto is definitely going to be an opportunity for people, I think. And it's still early stage. Yeah, it's definitely early stage for sure, I think. Have you heard all the counter arguments against Bitcoin, like the tether argument? Right. But if you heard me earlier, and I, I explained it in detail, if you will, mm-hmm. that uh, Bitcoin, everybody's thinking in Bitcoin in terms of a, a cryptocurrency or a currency. And so all the arguments about Bitcoin, they don't hold water once you recognize what it really is, which is a collectible. You can't make an argument against a collectible. It's like saying that a Picasso is gonna go down because a new, a new painter is gonna arrive on the scene, right? It doesn't, it, that collectability of Bitcoin is not going away. And that's what people don't recognize, is that there is so few Bitcoin. Um, there's just not enough to go around. A mass mutual, I, I, I predicted this. I'm not the only one, but I predicted. I said that insurance companies and pension funds would buy Bitcoin because of its, they wouldn't be able to avoid it. It's just too enticing because in pension funds and insurance companies are trying to get returns, right? Well, Bitcoin is, is trending higher and higher and higher. It's a good investment. Mass Mutual, which is an insurance company, I mean, you probably heard of them. They made an announcement yesterday that they were going to buy $100 million in Bitcoin. Wow. First, the first insurance company. They're not going to be the last. And again, wow. what are they going to do? They're going to buy the Bitcoin. They're going to stick it in a safe and let it sit there and just let it appreciate in value. It's an asset. None of the other cryptos are this way. So any argument against Bitcoin usually does not hold any water at all. The only argument you can make about against Bitcoin is that Quantum computers are going to are going to basically break the the whole the way that Bitcoin is secured. That's the only argument you can make, in my opinion. There's probably some others, but that's the that's for me that's the biggest one. And you know, I know I have a you know I think there's probably a small percentage that these quantum computers could get so darn powerful that they could figure out a way to break Bitcoin. It's possible, but other than that. Um, I don't see anything stopping Bitcoin from going to 100,000 in the next three years. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this discussion should be taken as investment advice. Guests are not compensated for their appearance. Do not base any investment decisions on the information presented.